Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, your honors, by February 2003, after months of intense ethnic fighting between the Lendu and the Hema, the armed group known as the Union des Patriotes Congolais, who, or the UPC, controlled much of the territory of Ituri in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. As a result of the UPC's targeted attacks against them, the Lendu population fled their homes to the surrounding forest. The UPC invited them to meet and talk about peace. Prosecution witness P106, a Lendu civilian, was apprehensive about the meeting, about meeting the UPC, but still, he made his way to the meeting point, joining up with other Lendu locals on the way. They went unarmed. It was a trap. Arriving near the top of the hill for the meeting, this witness saw UPC militia forcing Lendu people into a building and tying people together with rope. UPC soldiers surrounded the witness and others, violently beating them with sticks. The witness sprinted down the hill as the UPC militia shot after him. A man fleeing next to him was shot and collapsed. The witness survived. Searching for his family in the following days, he learned that the UPC had kidnapped his wife and four children. When he heard that bodies of Lendu men, women and children lay in a banana field in the village of Kobu, he made his way there on foot directly. In Kobu, he saw a banana field where the trees had been cut. Amongst these trees were many bodies. Like him, other people had come to look for their family members. He searched through the dead bodies for a long time before discovering his dead son, a toddler, disemboweled and his throat slit. He knew his wife had to be close. He soon found her. She had the same wounds. He then found his infant daughter, just seven months old. Her head was punctured and her throat was slit. Finally, he saw the bodies of his two remaining children. They had suffered the same fate. He collected the lifeless bodies of his family. He brought them home and buried them in a field by his house. Another witness, P805, a farmer, also saw the bodies in the banana field. He had never seen a mass killing before. The first thing that caught his attention was how the victims had been killed. Their heads had been beaten with a piece of wood and their throats slit. He counted the bodies of 49 Lendu men, women, and children. They had cut the bellies of four or five of the women. They had slaughtered the children. There was blood everywhere. This trial, Mr. President, is about Boscon Taganda's responsibility for the murder of P106 family and those in the banana field in Kobu, and for the se other 17 brutal crimes for which he is charged. Boscon Taganda was the highest commander in charge of operations and organization. He planned and led operations. He coordinated logistics, weapons, and training for the UPC troops who carried out the crimes. He gave orders to attack and kill. Boscon Tanganda did not punish anybody for these crimes. Instead, he praised the commander on the ground at the time of the killings, Salumu Mulenda, calling him a real man. This trial is about Boscon Taganda's responsibility 
for the murder and attempted murder, persecution, forcible transfer, rape, sexual slavery, destruction of property, pillage, attacks against civilians and against protected objects committed against Lendu, Ngiti, and other non-Hema civilians in and around Mongwalu in December and November 2002, and in and around Kobu in February 2003, and for the recruitment, use, rape, and sexual slavery of children who were under 15 years of age. This case is about the violence that decimated Ituri, leaving hundreds of civilians dead. Thousands living in the forest with nothing and a population devastated by sexual violence. My office received reports that Boscon Taganda continued to terrorize Eastern Congo for a decade more through the UPC and other armed forces. This court ordered his arrest in 2006, which he evaded until his surrender in 2013. Humanity demands justice for such crimes. Justice for the people of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Justice for the innocent lives lost, ravaged, and destroyed. It is justice that must hold Bosco Taganda accountable for his acts. Here, in this courtroom, the evidence will show that Bosco Taganda is guilty of the crimes as charged. Boscon Taganda was a notorious and powerful military leader with high command in the UPC. He, along with other senior leaders, seized control of Ituri in mid-2002 to 2003. Ituri has been described as one of the bloodiest corners of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. It is an area known for its abundant gold, diamonds, and oil a place where its people should have been living their lives with their families and benefiting from the riches of their homeland. Instead, it became a place where its people were targeted, terrorized, and abused. At least 5,000 civilians reportedly died in direct ethnic violence in Ituri in the seven months between July 2002 and March of 2003 alone. Boscon Taganda and his armed group not only terrorized the civilian population, they terrorized their own troops. They recruited and used hundreds of children under the age of 15 to wage their bloody war. They forced these children to kill and treated them cruelly. They also raped and sexually enslaved the girls. Rape and sexual enslavement of its own soldiers was so prevalent in the UPC that these girls were referred to as guduria. This is a Swahili word for a large communal cooking pot. Reduced to objects which soldiers and commanders could pass around and use for sex whenever they pleased. He and other UPC leaders, including Thomas Lubanga, and Floribert Kisembo, united in a plan to control Ituri, and they systematically expanded their power in the region. By controlling Ituri, they would not only have significant military and political reach, they would also gain enormous economic power. Power meant to, the benefit, to benefit the Hema community. Money meant to benefit Boscon Taganda personally. The Lendu, Ngiti, and non Iturian civilian population who occupied desirable land stood in the way of this plan. Boscon Taganda and those who joined him sought to drive out the population to gain control of the territory, and he ensured that they could not and did not return. Your Honours, the evidence will prove, beyond a reasonable doubt, that the crimes for which Boscon Taganda is charged occurred within the context of a non-international armed conflict that ravaged Ituri for more than one year. 
The evidence will also show that the crimes occurred during a widespread or systematic attack against a civilian population covering a large territory and harming a large number of civilians. The crimes were not random, isolated, or spontaneous. They were part of a carefully planned, coordinated, and executed campaign of violence, deliberately targeting the Lendu and Ngiti civilian populations and other non-Hema ethnic groups. Boskun Taganda personally committed crimes. He also made an essential contribution to a common plan to assume military and political control of Ituri and drive out their enemies. As one of the highest military commanders in the UPC, he planned, he coordinated, and commanded the two attacks of the November 2002 and February 2003 with Floribert Kisembo and other top UPC military leaders, militia leaders. He recruited, trained, and organized the army. He procured and distributed weapons and ammunition. He ensured compliance with orders. He developed the group's communication ability. He issued orders to attack, pillage, rape, persecute, and kill or induce the commission of crimes. He and the other co-perpetrators acted in a common purpose to commit the crimes. Not only did Boskontaganda directly or jointly commit crimes, he also failed to prevent or punish the crimes committed by the troops under his effective command and control. He was deputy chief of staff in charge of cooperation, operations and organization. And he also exercised extensive de facto powers. His orders were executed automatically. The evidence will show that he knew or should have known that his troops were committing or were about to commit crimes. These were the same troops that had committed crimes in other attacks and using the same brutal tactics. Mr. President, your honors, you will hear from many witnesses during the course of this trial. Some of these witnesses have reported alleged attempts to interfere with them to end their cooperation with the prosecution. We have taken and continue to take measures to address this. Let me caution those individuals behind alleged attempts to intimidate ICC witnesses. These are serious offenses under the national law of states parties. These are serious offenses under the Rome Statute of this court. This trial must proceed without interference with either the prosecution or the defense witnesses. Lastly, Mr. President, you will hear repeatedly throughout the trial about the ethnic conflict that pitted the hammer against the Lendu, Ngiti, and other ethnic groups. You will hear evidence that the UPC was a Hema militia created by and for the Hema population of Ituri. It is important to acknowledge here that both sides to the conflict, the Hema and the Lendu, as well as the other ethnic groups, perpetrated acts and suffered as victims during the conflict. Atrocities were committed by all sides, and the militias in the area exploited ethnic divides to satisfy their greed. Let me be clear. This trial is not a trial of the Hema people. It is not about vindicating or indicting an ethnic group. Indeed, my office has equally prosecuted crimes committed against the Hema victims. Je tiens à préciser encore une fois que le procès qui est sur le point de s'ouvrir n'est pas le procès de l'une ou l'autre communauté. Il ne s'agit pas du procès d'une appartenance ethnique ou d'un groupe ethnique. Il s'agit du procès d'un individu, Boscontaganda, 
qui a profité des tensions ethniques en Ituri à des fins personnelles pour accéder au pouvoir et à la richesse et qui, pour ce faire, a commis des atrocités. This trial is about his individual criminal responsibility for murder and attempted murder, pillaging, attacks against civilians, attacks against protected objects, destruction of property, rape and sexual slavery, persecution, forcible transfer of a civilian population, and significantly, the enlistment and conscription and the use of children under the age of 15 and their rape and sexual slavery. This case, Mr. President, is about the thousands of victims of his crimes who must finally have justice. They deserve no less. The evidence will prove that Boscon Taganda is guilty of the crimes as charged. Mr. President, your honors, my learned colleague, Nicole Sampson, the senior trial lawyer of the case, will now present the context in which the crimes were committed in a more detailed outline of the evidence supporting the charges. I thank you, Mr. President, your honors. <laughs> 